What I would like to do in this uh, segment is actually show the real runtime stack in action and see how C++ is actually doing what we learned in this course uh, that should be get, should get done. So what we see here is a small piece of code, not too interesting, that uh, what it does is it creates a function foo, it uses uh, two parameters, x and y, it just adds one to y and one to x, it doesn't really do anything. And we have a function main, which actually gets a seven and eight and calls the function foo, notice it's not doing anything with the return value. And let's take a look at what happens behind the scenes. So we compile this code. It actually should compile, there's nothing to it, it's no big deal. And we put a breakpoint. Now let's take a look at this at the disassembly behind the scenes. And notice that we're also looking at the stack. We look at the actual memory that we see on the right side of the, of the board. Actually, you see the memory. And what it's doing is it's putting seven into the variable A and eight into the variable B. That, that's no big deal. And let's move on from there. Now, if we look at A, we get a seven. If we look at B, we get an eight. That's great. Who cares? Let's go on. What's important for our discussion now is this function calling thing. Now, notice the code is foo AB. Now, take a look. It's moving B onto the stack. So if you take a look at what, what's on the stack, well, here's our stack. We're looking at the stack, okay? The stack is at location F88, right here. Now, um, let's make it four so we can follow it easily. And there's our stack, okay? So we have our stack. Now let's follow through on the stack. So on the right side, we have actually the memory. On the left side, in the middle, we have actually the registers. And on the left side, we have the code. Notice the first two lines of the code are um, move B into EAX and then push EAX. So what it's actually doing is it's pushing, it's pushing the value of B, which is eight onto the stack. Notice that EAX at this point in time is actually eight. It's actually shown in red. It's actually eight and that's being pushed onto the stack. If we take a look at the stack, we'll take a look, we just pushed it onto the stack. And I notice it's a little endian. So the byte, this is our eight, right? This is our eight and it's written a little endian. So that just means that the least significant bits are on the left side. Therefore it's zero eight to zero 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 zero. And what it actually is, it's actually the EAX, which is actually zero 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 eight. Okay, so that's being pushed on the stack. Notice that the stack pointer decreased and became B4, okay? Now notice that the stack pointer is not pointing at the first empty location. The stack pointer is pointing at the last full location, which is already a difference between what we did in our labs and the compiler of C++ and the, uh, and the x86, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, the x86. And um, uh, the second thing is to notice is that in our labs, when we push something onto the stack, the, st the stack pointer increased. Well, now the stack point is decreasing towards the zero. Okay, so it's actually every time we push something, the stack pointer is decreasing. So the stack pointer used to be at uh, um, uh, B8, right? That's what it used to be. We pushed a four byte uh, integer onto the stack and then now the stack pointer moved to B4. So it decreased to B4. Next thing we push is we push the next variable onto the stack. So let's push it onto the stack. So ECX became the seven and we push that onto the stack. And if we look at the stack, we see that we have the eight and above that we have the seven. And our new stack pointer is B zero. Now we call the function. Now an important thing before we call the function is what is our return address? Where are we returning to? And the answer to that is the, the next command after the call. So the return address that we expect to see is this, uh, this one zero E1, right? The zero one zero E 17 C9 that we see right there. That is the return address. That will get pushed onto the stack. It will be pushed in little endian, so you're gonna see C9 17 E0 E1. But that is the return address, just like we did when we did lab number, I think five, but it's also we did lab number two but that is the return address for our code. So let's go in and see what happens. 
So the first thing you take a look at the right side, this is the jump table, forget about that for a second, but take a look at the right side and you see that the 0, 01, 0, E17, C9 got pushed on the stack. Now, if you take a look further down from that point, you see the seven and the eight. Okay, so we have the eight, we have the seven, and we have the return address. Okay, the next thing we do is we go into the function. Now, every function has a preamble and a postamble. The preamble is um, the function storing or holding on to the environment. So we did that also in lab number two. We went and we stored all the environment variables we want to store. So for the AX86, we have to decide here which ones we want to store. So for notice, the first thing we're storing is the EBP. The EBP is the previous extended buffer pointer. The EBP is what stores the location of the previous frame. And we're going to store that now so we can actually go back. When we go back to the previous frame and we move back, when back in time, in a sense, what's going to happen is we're going to pop out of the stack this EBP. So let's store that. So here we stored that. That's stored the EBP. Now the new EBP, notice the stack pointer is pointing at A8. A8. That's the new stack pointer. Okay. And that's going to be the new EBP. Because at this point in time, if you take a look, this is the location where, you want, where we want to hold a, a, um, a marker and say, okay, from this location and up, when I say up, I mean the numbers, it's down in the picture, is where all our argument segment is. And from this location and down, which is up in the picture, right, is where our local variables are going to be. Okay, so notice that this EVP is our marker for the offset. So the next thing is we move ESP into EBP. And notice that the EBP became the A8. Just, I'm just using the last, you know, the least significant byte, the A8. Okay. And now I notice that it's creating the way this the system here works as opposed to what we did in lab number two, where we push zeros. What's going on here is it is just creating a place for the local variables, meaning to say it's not going to um, to just, you know, um, say, okay, push, 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 push. It's just going to skip the stack pointer up for a whole bunch of memory. So that's what it's doing now. It's skipping the stack pointer up. And then it's storing the EBX, ESI, EDI. You can't see all that because it's up further up in the stack. But it doesn't make a big difference. The load effective address. When you learn assembly, you deal with these things, but I don't really care anymore. What I care is the value of the next commands. So let's just move on. Here we have our command that we say, okay, move y into eax. Okay, uh, y is the local variable, right? It's an argument segment. So what is y? Well, y is our is our is our seven is our eight. I'm sorry, sorry about that. Y is our eight. So it's going to move it to, to our our move the eight into the eax. So it's doing that. Then it's adding one, and then it's pushing it back into the Y, and if you look at the right side at the Y, you can see here at B4, right here. Notice it's our same Y, it's our argument, say it's, it's, a, it's the copy of our Y, is gonna become a nine. Okay, it became a nine. The same thing we're gonna do for the X. Okay, we increased X by one, notice the seven became an eight. Okay, this, is, this was a seven, now it became an eight. This is our local variable, our argument segment in a sense. Up here where all these C's are is our local variables, which you don't have. And now comes the post amble. The post post amble is gonna actually now unwind or everything we see, we've seen. So it's popping, it's popping the EDI back to where it was. It's popping the ESI, it's popping the EBX. Notice it's doing everything backwards. We pushed EBX, ESI, EDI. Now what we're doing is we're popping EBX, we're popping EDI, ESI, EBX. Now the location where uh, we want to we want to move the stack pointer to the location where the buffer pointer is holding. The buffer po pointer is holding exactly here at our return address. In a sense, we are recycling this segment of local memory that we set aside by just jumping, moving the ESP to the EBP. So now the ESP is actually going to move back. Notice that the ESP is back. To whether we stored the return address.
No, it's one before the return address. This was the previous EBP. This was the return address. All right, this was the return address. This was the previous EBP. So the stock pointer is back to this point. The next thing it does is it pops EBP. What that does, in a sense, it returns the environment back to what it was, the previous frame. And it calls the function return. Now notice, we're going to return for the function. And we move to the return address. And we're going to add to the stack pointer 8. I'm going to talk about this add in a minute. OK? But what I want to take a look is at the stack. Nothing on the stack really, really changed. Notice we still have our 9. We still have our 8. We still have our, our return address. We still have our EBP. Everything is stored in the stack. Just the fact that the ESP moved is going to be moved down. Notice now it's being moved down. The next step is moved down. And the ESP is back to where it began at B88. This is exactly where it began, right? B88 is where it began. But the stack itself did not change. So just the mere fact that we are moving the ESP back to where it was, in a sense, allowed us to recycle uh, the, entire, the entire memory that we used during this runtime stack run. So in a sense, this sums up an example of everything we've seen uh, in lab number two, everything we spoke about during this lecture, uh, things we've seen in previous lectures, you just actually see it happening uh, in real life on the x86.